Well, I'm delighted to say Mark Beach, a rock critic and editor of the cultural magazine Dante, joins me now. Very warm welcome to you. Hi, Sam. Um, he didn't court the limelight, did he, Malcolm Young? What kind of a man was he? He was a very quiet man. He was almost a, a non-rock star type figure. Uh, but when he started off in his career, he was he worked in a factory for a little bit before he became a, um, a musician. Uh, that's what his parents were thinking he should do. And therefore he was not like the flashy person. He almost got like a nine to five mentality, the way he'd do things. Uh, that didn't mean to say he didn't take it seriously. But nonetheless, he never really thought of himself as being a star. Yeah, he was prolific, wasn't he? I mean, him and his brother wrote all these songs, what, 30 odd years? Yeah, and there is a tragic thing which was mentioned in the report we had just there that sadly towards the end, when he stopped touring, then he was actually having to be taught the, the chords to some of the songs which he'd co-written all those years ago because he was not able to remember them and which point he thought this was the time to move on. Really sad, isn't it? Because he had mm. dementia, obviously. Yes. Um, how did they become so successful? Um, it was a formula which wasn't immediately successful. It must be said when they started off with their first singer, uh, Dave Evans, and they were not quite there. But they brought together a lot of things, certainly Malcolm's enthusiasm for Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly, and uh, that was one of the things that brought them together. They started to develop a hard blues, and all of a sudden it clicked. After about five years, we started getting the albums which run up to Highway to Hell and obviously Back in Black. And what an achievement to create the second best-selling album of all time. <laughs> yes. I, I guess, I mean, you can never anticipate that kind of success, can you? But how, how did he manage that? Well, it came about under interesting uh, set of circumstances, which they've been through a few lead singers and uh, that had the death of one and that were wondering at that stage whether to carry on with the band. But they thought that Bon Scott, who was the singer, would want them to do so, and they did. Uh, brought in Brian Johnson to carry on doing stuff. Uh, but at that stage then, uh, it, it was not a formula. It was very much, uh, in fact, it was going to be a tribute to their late lead singer. And their songs inspired generations of rock bands, didn't they? Metallica, Guns N' Roses. Yes, yes. Well, that's the thing. As, as we were saying earlier on in the report, then people remember and will remember uh, uh, Angus for his uh, schoolboy outfits and his flamboyant stage presence. But in fact, the man who held the band together and was the true leader was Malcolm. And how do you think he'll be remembered? I think he'll be remembered for some of those riffs which he crafted with, with uh, Angus and uh, also as being a, a great figure behind the scenes and developing music. And there was a nice line from uh, the writer, uh, Stephen King, who was saying that uh, amongst all else, then he was a quiet man, but he let his guitar do the talking and make the noise. And there we will leave it. Mark Beach, thank you very much for coming in and talking to us about Malcolm Young. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.